Hey love bugs, this is Ross. I'm back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs, my grown extended beautiful family as always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly, truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you feel like the videos just give you a good vibe um, that you can truly resonate with and you know that you would really you know you really got something from please go ahead and share you never know what it can do for the next person so i hope you're able to resonate with the content of my video and this video is called healing from a narc uh a narc parent abuse um I, i've gone through it my whole life you know my whole life um and it wasn't something that I really could understand because I thought it was normal. You know what I'm going through, you know, because it was just like the things that I normalize when I see people actually doing what, you know, they actually had a supportive family. And, you know, family going to always have its issues, going to have its ups and downs. But mine was like a war zone, you know, war zone. Um, and uh, it, it was like when going through this this purpose that I've gone through with my life you know I had to really go to the root of the belly of the beast to really understand why I had to go through those things to really do the research about it you know I'm always been that type of person for me to understand what I'm going through to really understand where where how can I heal from that where's the standpoint where I heal at I gotta go all the way back do you know to the beginning how can I be able to understand this how can I be able to set free you know and all these different things you know um I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to have life in peace, you know, ready to, you know, uh, having to understand how can I do that. And, you know, for me to be able to really overcome that, I had to be able to accept, you know, this is what they did. You know, you, you, you're at, you're that one that was chosen for uh, generational curses, healing the generational curses and um, karmic, what is it? Karmic cycles, generational curses. So, you know, we normalized all these things. You're unprogramming yourself. You're taking um, the the chains off to limited beliefs. You're allowing yourself to dissolve any kind of toxic habits, you know, intrusive thoughts, negative thoughts about yourself, the how, you know, your surroundings, your individuals, all these different things. Um, and it had to come through the occurrence of traumatic experience. For me to do that, you know, I was adopted into my family, so I really didn't know what was going on. Um, my mom, uh, she went through a lot of uh, uh, narcissistic uh, experiences. You know, she really didn't tell me much about her life of what was going on. Um, but her ex-husband, my adopted father, it took me a long time for me to actually label that after everything I've gone through. But I had to come to peace with it, and he is who he was, you know, uh, my adopted father. He went through a lot. He told me uh, to a certain extent what he went through and um, how uh, his life was. And it, it became to that point that what he had experienced in his life, he became the next stage of that. And just not the next stage, but you went a little bit higher for that you know um and for those different things that has taken place that i experienced through my life you know um it was it was crazy uh for the situations that i've gone through because uh i knew even from when i was a little girl you know um i went through a lot of uh night terrors for what I've gone through because my truth was being revealed to me as an age you know because even when I was born I went through a traumatic situation because of uh, my parents um, my biological parents they were very young you know my dad was 18 um, my mom was uh, 16 you know my dad the way things were it didn't work out for him to keep me and you know it was a blessing through all that uh, that he was with me my first you know 72 hours that I was born um, and that love was very deep and for that to be ripped away from me because CPS took him, you know, took me away from them. Um, and he couldn't keep me because, you know, he didn't have any kind of stability because him and my mom were supposed to get married and things didn't work out the way it did. So I had to be given up for adoption. And just for that, you know, they, they say that infants don't, um, remember things from, you know, when you know, they were babies, but yet with me, I did. 
you know, it was very traumatic. You know, I felt that love. I didn't get to really um, feel that love for my mom. And it wasn't, you know, saying that is that she didn't care. But it was just the fact that she knew and my my grandparents knew she, there wasn't going to be a way for her keeping me. Because it was like their relationship, number one, they were too young. Uh, it was based on toxicity too, you know, um, that her and my dad had, you know, even though they had love, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, love like it's supposed to be. It was kind of, you know, toxic, codependent, uh, relationship and they, they were really young. Um, so things happened the way it happened and it was very traumatic for me because I, I wouldn't, you know, after that situation with me being ripped out of my father's arms. You know, I had nightmares. I didn't want to talk. To I mean, not talk, but I didn't want to be touched at all. You know, uh, going through that. And um, I cried every day. You know, and my mom, when I finally got older and I used to tell my mom, my mom used to tell me, um, you, you wouldn't let anybody touch you. You know, you, you cried for months and months at a time and it was just because of that love that I had with my dad it was something that was ripped away from me you know it, it was I felt violated as a child and never knew why that trauma was so deep when it came to me you know um a baby shouldn't have trust issues a baby shouldn't be traumatized you know at that way but yet I was so uh going through that and being adopted you know, at four or five years old, you know, I used to tell my mom, you know, um, my daddy is not my real daddy. I have a different daddy. You know, when I'm sleeping, I have a different daddy when I'm awake. And my mom was just like, who told you that, you know, just because of who my father was. Um, he's like, who told you these things, you know? Um, and she was just like, I said, nobody, you know, I, I have, a, you know, dreams about my, my real daddy all the time. I talked to him every night, you know, and it, you, you, when I would talk about him, I would get very emotional. And I, she, I used to always tell my mom, why do I only have to see him at night? Why do I always have to see him when I'm asleep? Why can't I see him when I'm awake? And um, those things was, you know, it's, it's hard. You know, it's just like right now, I've healed from so many things. Um, but that part of me is still kind of sensitive, you know, when it comes to that, because my, my, my biological father is no longer living and I never had that chance to get that normalcy, normal, normalcy or whatever you want to call it, um, to be able to get into that physical connection with him again. But, um, just being able to, you know, my dad went all over, you know, to try to find out where I was, who, you know, who adopted me and, you know, where was I at? You know, my dad would always find out where I was. And uh, being able to have that blessing to be able to still connect with him in that way. But it was just like that truth couldn't come out about, you know, who I was, who I was related to. Um, that my parents weren't my real parents, my biological parents, but the parents that raised me. But it was something, anytime I talked to my dad, it was something very, very profound with that that energy we connected to you know when I first talked to him it, it was very emotional you know and only way he can talk to me is that he had to say that he was a close family friend he hasn't seen me since I was a baby and you know he always used to just check up on me and um the first time me and him talking uh the the voice like connected with me I was five and when I did that I bursted out into tears you know um and I was really, you know, at a five-year-old's age, you know, you're really trying to say, where do I know this voice from? I don't know who this, the voice, I'm trying to picture the face to the voice, the person it belongs to. But whoever this voice is, it loves me deeply and I love them deeply and I just don't know. And I burst it out into tears. And, you know, I told, you know, I told my uncle, you know, I'm sorry, I can't remember, you know, what you look like. But I remember you and I, I, I was crying and still to this day, I remember that, you know, I really do. I remember that and I knew whoever he was that was on the phone, it was somebody who loved me deeply and I loved him deeply and I still do. Um, and it, it was going through all those situations where, um, where we stayed, stayed close together. 
in that spirit and you don't know, throw out that connection and um you know just being able to do that and it, it was always something you know uh where i would ask my mom a question it's like uh only time and it was just like when i did it i noticed that i would never ask her in front of my mom's you know my my adopted father i would never do that but it was like it, it felt like me and her could talk openly um uh when it came to situations like that because i always used to tell her uh i had a dream daddy and um there was why does you know i have a dream daddy in my dream it was like you know but it was I always felt like the way my the way i pictured it it was just extra love that i had that i would have another i have two daddies you know i had two daddies where i had one when i was awake and i had one when i was little and you know going through all those different things um when i uh I, I got a lot of love but there was a lot of things when it came to that situation with my dad it was a threat to my adopted father you know and i really wasn't understanding um it would be times where i would have night terrors that was so severe that i would use the bathroom on myself i would scream every single night and you know um and wake up calling for my dad and then when my mom's husband came I was snatched away from him and he's like you called me I'm like I wasn't talking about you you know he's like but you called me I wasn't talking about you I wasn't calling you I was calling my other daddy but not you and then he would be looking at my mom like what did you say and he's like I didn't say anything this is something she's been saying I told you it's gonna come to a point where she's gonna know something so I would have nightmares about my dad all the time like I would see my dad and the way I would see my dad there's you know it, it was just weird you know because it was like the way he was at that period he didn't look like that at that period you know he looks far advanced and then but um and then I would go through all these different things to where I would have night terrors and I knew the truth except that I, I just I knew the truth but I just didn't know the truth you, you know because the way my mom was always like she's old so I talked very advanced you know a five year old was talking like she's about 40 you know and it was very uh, my mom could understand it, my, it but it was a threat to my mom's husband so going through that and then when I start picking up my dad my biological father's you know traits it, it was threatened to him so anything was down that it was very downplayed it was like a punishment you can't speak about that you can't talk about that you can't do nothing so growing up like that it, it was hard you know because it was like at that time I was getting the love that I deserve but there was certain things when it came to my my real identity it was it, it was kind of it was it was you couldn't talk about it if you did it was in trouble the only time I could really talk about it if it was with my mom so going on later in life you know um things just started getting worse and worse you know the older I got the more I started acting like my my father um I got in trouble for her, you know and then going through this time you know when I found out all of the different things was coming on you know um I found out I was adopted you know on my 13th birthday I really didn't care for my birthday you know I dread it <laughs> you know it's like it's getting ready to come up and in a few weeks you know um and I, I never it was always like a um a negative reminder of what I didn't want or want to remember hold on y'all real quick there's something out here. sorry y'all I had a pot on the stove I'm like oh, okay oh, let me go ahead and do that <laughs> let me go ahead and water to it but anyways you know going through that you know, fast forward and a couple of years down, you know, I've gone through a lot. You know, I've gone through a lot. And anything that my um, adopted father had went through, it kind of like starts spewing out on me. You know, um, anything that I did that mirrored out something that it was a threat to him, I was punished for it a lot. And, you know, finding out everything that I've gone through, you know, fast forward, you know, I went through a lot of different things. And it was like, when I went through my spiritual awakening, my father had passed away, you know, and then found out, you know, the truth about my dad. And it was nerve wracking. It, it was traumatizing in every form, uh, you know, uh, possible. You know, I didn't want to believe what my truth was. I didn't want to accept that. 
Um, but it was like that was where my turning point of where my life of illusion ended and the truth I had to go on the journey for it again. You know, healing from that. Uh, you know, and really truly understanding to be able how can you forgive when your life meant nothing to somebody when when things you, you're being punished for things that wasn't you know even your fault and it had nothing to do with you and I had to really for me to be able to walk away uh and to forgive the unforgivable you know uh that that's where it led to my purpose because my life the what I faced what I've had to accept and what I know was true um a lot of people you don't it don't end well for people in a situation like that and that's where my purpose led at you know um going into the depths of you know <laughs> you know all the acknowledgement about who my father is it's on another thing I, i'm not uh, that's not what the uh this the the content of this experience is going to be i've already talked about that so i had to lay that to rest um but going through that it, it was really hard because my situation led to my life trying to be ended because of that. And um, for me to be able to get peace from that, I mean, when I say I had to really, oh, I had to really, really, really face a lot of things that was hard for me to do. And that's where my route of healing discovery really, really went to. You know, I thought it was, you know, going through all this, but it took a turn. You know, and it took for me to have to be in, in that rock in the hard place. It had to me be me um, uh, at the belly of the bottom of the barrel. I was in the belly of the beast in the bottom of the barrel, you know, um, and I had to go through that. And it, it was just like I would cry many days because I had to accept that there was never no love there. You know, my love didn't the love that I thought I had was not existed you know because you know people are like how do you say you weren't loved and I said love you don't stop loving somebody because they mirror something that has nothing to do with them you, that, that's not love and I can't fault that love that wasn't there even though I have every right to I can't fault that for me to be able to come to peace with that I can't fault that because you can't force somebody to love anybody if they don't have that love for themselves you know um my life had no meaning to people that I thought it would have meaning to. You know, when when you are a parent, you're supposed to protect your children, you know, in every way possible. There's something about a, a parent that you're supposed to see your child as innocent. It's something that, you know, is a gift from God that you're supposed to protect. Mine wasn't, you know. The person that was... Uh, that loved and cared for me was always kept away from me you know any time that there was a connection um it, it had to be on the based on other people's terms of control so it was like when all the truth unfolded and just knowing that you've always had contact on and off with the parent that really loved you that couldn't come save you couldn't do nothing you know because that was stopped every single time you know um it was really hard for me to accept you know I went under a lot of great depression I've you know I've uh, questioned suicide a lot you know um, and then knowing that you know my father life ended abruptly you know uh, not knowing you know who did it who was at fault you know that was something I, I you know I can't force that answer when God wasn't feeling that I was ready for it you know, um, and it is something I have to deal with every day, you know, and I, I remind myself all the time from healing from this and growing from this is not something that's easy. It's not a walk in the park. There's days that I cry a lot, you know, um, my dad's anniversary is coming up in a few days and, you know, dealing with those different things, I try to keep myself busy, not from ignoring the fact of the sadness, but being able to heal, you know, I, I can't allow myself to stay in a, 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 a state of depression 
you know, um, and losing my mind every every year it comes to a birthday or every year it comes to uh, a transition to remind me of what is no longer here in that state that I, I want it. You know, I can't allow myself to keep going through that. But just being able to allow myself to forgive. You know, how how can you forgive that somebody, a, a parent that you thought that was supposed to protect you, kept you away, you know, on, on their benefit of others? You know, um, I don't know. I, I had to. You know, um, I felt like God has forgiven him and everybody that, that played a part in that. So it was my job to have to do that too. You know, um, ego was like, hell no, no, you can't. They, they deserve the worst in their life. You know, anger, you know, rage, all those things. But that held me on to a thing that doesn't, it can't belong to me anymore. Uh, I wanted to feel peace in my heart. Not being able to know the full identity of my parents. You know, my mom is still living, you know, um, but we don't have contact for certain reasons and I have to respect that. Um, and you know going through these things is like you know like I've said before universe has guided me to talk to this talk about these subjects you know even though it's a touchy subject but you know there's going to be things that I'm going to have to talk about that they're guiding me to talk about that there's going to bring up emotions but just being able to pr be proud to say you know um, you were able to place forgiveness in places that it would be hard for other people to do you know, um, you're creating that, that vibration of peace when so much that has taken place that wants you to have a war. You know, um, being able to force justice in a place where I, I can't do that. You know, uh, people's choices of what they have done is already created, you know, a justice that only God can do. You know, um, I had to be able to allow myself to disconnect, you know, and understand that um, my adopted father really went through a lot of dark things in his life um, that was normalized. And um, the things he hated most about what he went through, he ended up creating that in my life. And it, it was a lot worse than what he went through. Um, and it, it was just like growing up on that, you know, there was alcoholism, very bad, that, that was a coping mechanism, not just for him, but, you know, his siblings as well. Uh, being able to do the research of everything that I've gone through, you had to understand there's something that must have been very bad that happened in their lives to where they, they seek that type of option to be able to self-medicate just to get through the days. And, you know, I really you know for me to be able to gain peace in my life I had to really see things from a different way really really uh, doing that so it's like every day is my mission to stay positive you know um, even when there's days that I feel sorrow you know uh, of what I have to face what I had to accept what I had to come to terms with um, it's not easy you know, uh, because it, it was a, a big part of me was ripped away. You know, um, no matter how much I wanted to uh, get that closure, it was always denied to me, you know. And I had to be able to come accepting of that when God seen that that closure happen is going to be on his time. I can't force that door open, you know, because there are certain things that, uh, that I was still dealing with. You know, um, but just for where I'm at now, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful uh, to be able to be that person to just say, I I've been through a lot. It's not important to it to you about everything that I've gone through. Because it's like, if you've been with me for a while, you know, 
you know, if not, if it's meant for you to know, you'll you'll find out when it's due time. It's just like this is not that video for that, but it's just to be able to talk about uh, going through a narcissistic uh, exposure of having narcissistic parents. Um, you, you, I went through that. You know, I still battle with it at times, like I've said. Uh, but I'm at a healing point where I can actually talk about it and not be enraged, you know, about it. But there will be times, you know, because I, I really miss my dad. I love my dad a lot. And he was a big part of my life, whether he was in it all the time and consistent, even though that's what he wanted. Um, that spirit is there. You know, uh, I speak to him every day. You know, and just being able to have that blessing of him because he's such a beautiful person. He's such a beautiful entity. And just to be able, uh, I never got a chance to meet my grandparents, you know, and just being able to have that connection with them too. And just to be able to have that support from them is very beautiful. Uh, and it helps me out daily, you know, to be able to go through that. Because I have my moments where I cry a lot. Um, but it, it's just like, that's normal. That's normal, especially when something that traumatic is going, crying, you know, is is normal towards that. It could have been a lot worse, but, you know, going through that, you know, for me to be able to go through uh, a narcissistic experience like that and to be able to come out of terms to where, uh, you know, it didn't make me a monster of my own. You know, I had to allow myself to come to terms like, hey, I passed some of that to my kids, too. You know, and I had to really go through um, a lot of transition, you know, um, but it, my situation to where I'm at now, I don't really have a connection with my children the way I wish I did, you know, but I had to allow myself to be accepting of that, you know, because I feel like there's a lot of times it can seem uh, not fair, you know, uh, when things like that happens because I love my kids. My kids are everything to me. You know, it was like, I'll, I'll take a bullet from my kids. Um, but it was like this situation has really ripped my life apart. But through that, that forgiveness, through that healing, through that acceptance, and through uh, me, me moving forward, you know, um, there's still a line of hope. There was, you know, a silver line will come through that to where, you know, it'll better me and my children's relationship. Um but just being able to make peace with that, that really rock my salts off to lead me towards this of, of doing what I do. I can just be able to say, you know, um, I may not have understood it then, but for what my, I got the clarity, you know, even though there are certain things that I still don't have the answers to. Um, but I'm grateful for where I'm at at this point. You know, I'm grateful for where I'm at and just knowing I'm working hard to be able to create so much more. I don't know what my path, where, where my journey is going to take me, but just for being able to do what I do now, you know, I feel very, uh, I feel very honored and feel, feel very blessed at what God is, has me doing. Um, because I never felt in the day after I found out where I found out, I never felt like I can never forgive that because it can never be undone. You know, um, it, it was, I was robbed of a lot, you know, but then it's just like when things are taken, there are certain things that are in store It's going to take that. It's like, you know, I, I used to hate that saying because it's just like when it comes to family or a loved one that is no longer here, you can't replace that. You know, there is no replacement that. So how can you say when you take something away that like that, it can be replaced with something better because you can't, you know. Um, but the only beautiful thing I can say about that is just that, you know, my family, my father, he's in a better place. Um, even though I don't have the answers, it's just like, even though we had this big rift between us, it's like this situation has brought us so much closer and our relationship has gotten so much stronger. Um, and I feel blessed to be able to, to have him in my life like that, um, no matter the things that I'm going through. So it, it's just like when you're, you know, um, going through different things like that of of experiencing uh narcissistic childhood you know um it can result into you becoming a narcissist yourself 
you know, um, like I've said before, you know, I've have, I don't feel myself as being a narcissist, but I feel like I've been exposed to that and I've led narcissistic traits. You know, I research and heal on that every day. You know, I hold myself accountable for those and I accept that, you know, a full honor. You know, um, I'm not, you know, proud of the things that I've done. I'm not proud of the hurt and pain that I placed on, you know, uh, my children as well as, you know, my adopted mom, you know, she went through a lot of, of because of this situation, you know, um, and it was uh, formed for me to hate her because she was the one that was supposed to have been the one behind all the things that I've gone through when it came out to be the opposite, you know, um, but my mom is no longer here, you know, uh, but she helps me, she helps me along my spiritual path as well. You know, um, and it was just a blessing before her timely passing. You know, it was just beautiful that we, me, we were able to mend our relationship as well. So it's just like when you're going through things like this, it's hard uh, to be able to part ways with it, especially if it's been going on for so long into your life, especially if it you've been exposed to it for so long, then you start carrying on that, you know, in your relationships with not just uh, your lovers, but within your friends. You know, um, and then it gets to that point where when you have that chance to really, you know, disconnect from that, it's not an easy task. I'm not saying it's, it's not impossible, you know, but it's possible. But it takes some work to do that. It takes some dedication and it takes discipline. Uh, just put it that way. Uh, but, you know, going through those different things, you know, um, it, it will take you through a journey. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. I said, I'm trying to use, you know, being selective and being discerning about the, the words that I use because I never want to use it in a narrative, even though this is a very, you know, negative situation to talk about. But it's showing you the different, di you know, the different avenues that you can face through harsh moments of that. You know, um, uh, being able to heal from different things like that and being able to reset it is not something this easy but this is where you find your voice within yourself this is where you find uh, love that you may have lacked uh, this gives you that chance to love yourself a lot more even wherever wherever you didn't receive love this is that chance for you to re be able to place that into yourself and for me it was so hard to do because I didn't I didn't know what it was like how can you do that you know just like when I went through a lot of things with my children it's like you can place love with them and I was like you know I only received that for a certain amount of the time so I can't force something I never really experienced you know it's hard for you to say that if you've never done it you know if you haven't been in that experience like me you know because people are like you can do that if you wanted to I you know, no, not at that time. I didn't see that because number one, I was I was very young when I started having my kids. You know, I was 23 when I had my third daughter. You know, well, they were, you know, I was 21 when I had my third daughter. Um, so I started off very young, you know, not married, didn't graduate high school, didn't do any of those things. Um, but I would never regret of having my children, even though they weren't planned the way they should have been. Um, I would never... I would never regret that. I love my children, regardless of how we're we're not in a in a good place right now. I still love my children, you know. Um, but this situation has really put a riff in it, you know. But being able to be able to speak on my my situation to a certain extent, uh, for certain reasons, uh, just being able to take the fact at hand, you you can heal from this. You can change your life. For the better for this you know but it takes you to have to be very assertive with yourself you know there's lines of uh, I, I was dealing with a lot of depression you know I've dealt with a lot of abuse in so many different ways it's like <laughs> you name it you know I've been through it um, and it, it took a lot for me to be able to say you know this is not going to define me but it's going to help me discover me on how I choose to do it I'm breaking uh, I'm breaking barriers you know I'm unnormalizing things that was normal you know I'm breaking generational curses that that became accustomed to being normal <laughs> you know and that has not been easy to do but you know every day you know every day you know no matter what I'm facing it that day it can be overwhelming it can be stressful but when I can say I made it through the day with a clear conscience 
and not heaviness in my heart, even though I may be going through some frustration, frustrating situations, I allowed myself to not take that to heart, even though it may get to my heart. I don't take it to heart because I know whatever I'm facing is strengthening me in some kind of way. I may not know what it is, it, what it's touching, but I know it's bringing some kind of strength into my life. And that's what you can do with yourself. You know, challenges are challenging, but when you're going through these obstacles, it's bringing strength to you. It's showing you you can be resilient. You know, your life does not have to stay this way. If you want peace in your life, you're going to have to enforce that into your life. If you want happiness in your life, you can't find that through money. You can't find that through 3D uh, materialistic things. You can't find that through a boyfriend. or You can't find that through a girlfriend or even through your children. You know, um, you can find love by giving your children that. But if you know that you're heavy in your heart with, you know, sadness, anger, depression and stuff like that, having children, you know, that's why I've also thought having children would make that better. But um, it made it worse to a certain extent. But the love that I have for my children, oh, that's the best part. You know, through all the other stuff, that was the best part, the love that I have. Um but you have to be able to find that love into yourself you know it's like oh if i had this person in my life i'll be so happy but you're looking for someone to make you happy you have to be able to find that love and happiness within yourself for you to be able to do that because whatever you're already seeking and you're yearning and you're desiring is already seeking you but you had to be able to get in that vibration of where it's it's going to be on that alignment of what's deserving for you but for you to get there you have to be able to love yourself you have to understand the obedience of being patient and I don't like that word as a cuss word for all I know to man but I appreciate what my patience done brought me you know um, I've allowed myself to not go through uh, coping mechanisms of sexual relations because I felt like everything could be fixed through sex you know and everything like that so I was very promiscuous at times but then uh, when I went through my tragedies I haven't submitted to anyone in over six going on close to six years and you know um, it was hard it takes a lot of willpower but it can be done you know because there's been people I know and I'm like you what now <laughs> you know I was like I love that wait a minute that's that's some kind of you know that's body connection what you talking about you know, but I, I mean, I put myself in positions that made poor choices and I didn't love. You know, I, I started at a very young age, you know, and I did, there was no love there. I felt connections. I was looking for love through sexual connections at a very young age. And, you know, um, I felt that was what I do because I, I didn't have a father to tell me, no, you know, this is not good. This is how a man's supposed to treat you. This is where love begins. And, you know, uh, disrespect begins you know I never had that so I had to find it in different ways so going through these situations is really brought so many beautiful benefits out of tragic situations so uh, being able to do that and being able to get to the root of it you know and allowing myself to say I, I'm, I'm praying that this doesn't bring grandchildren in, into my life I only got one granddaughter and my oldest daughter she's been through a lot you know, and I'm just doing all I possibly can to make sure that, that my, my granddaughter doesn't start going down the steps that, you know, that was repeated through that as well. So, you know, going through those different things that we're, you know, we're, we're trying to become that right person for ourselves, you know, because if you don't have kids, you don't want your children having that broken access of that you want that healing you want that positivity you want to be able to get everything that you know you lack you want to instill that into your children if you lack confidence you want to tell your, your your children you're beautiful you're smart you can conquer the world anything you put your mind to you can do this you know have that confidence to know even though it may seem that it, it can't happen it can you know, there's no dream that is ever too big that you can't bring to your reality. And you tell your child you're beautiful, you're smart. You instill them into that every day because you knew for the lack of what you didn't get, you see where it got the results for you not doing that. So that's the reason why, you know, they always tell you if you don't have children, um, when you're in, in situations like this, heal yourself so your children will get a bro broken version of you. You know, that's what my children have. You know, I, I see from the things that I've experienced in life 
what results it, it brought into my children and, and that's there's big regrets out of that you know um but it, it's just the fact is like i said before my children are grown you know um and i would really would love a, a stronger connection the way we had before you know but that with them being adults you know i start seeing a lot of things um that feel familiarized with me of what I've done, the choices I've made in life. And, you know, I really regret that part. But, you know, it's just a blessing that, you know, um, my oldest daughter, she didn't have her, her first daughter until she was in her 20s. So she broke that curse. You know, it was terrifying because I was just like, oh, my God, I got two more, you know. Uh, but it's a blessing. All, all my children are in college. You know, that's something I didn't, you know, I didn't finish school. Um, and just to be able to say I got one one daughter, uh, I mean one granddaughter, and you know she's my heart, she's my everything. She's very smart, you know, and she's very, you know, she's you can tell she's an old soul too, just the way she talks, and she's just hilarious. Um, but you know, it, it's just even though I've gone through a lot of things, there's a lot of beautiful things that has uncovered from those those bad things. Um, and like I said, it, it's not an easy thing to heal from. You know, especially if you've been exposed to it that young. Um, and then you continue all the way into your adulthood. You know, for you to make a 360 like that is not, it's not easy at all. But like I said before, it's not impossible to do. Because that's right now what we're on our purpose to do. Uh, universe and God has placed uh, uh, issues in our life for us to be that problem solvers. To know that we carry the solution for that. There's a lot of things in the world where people feel like it's impossible for certain things to turn out good after certain things have came out so terribly bad. And from that lies our purpose, where you're showing through your transition, through your healing, through your acceptance, through your 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 uh, your inner superhero. It, it was possible with you, you know, and it, it's just the things that you go through. And when you get to that point of healing into your all the way, when that door is closed from that, that tragedy, you're not going to even look like you went through the things that you have gone through. You're going to be uh, restored in so many ways that it is like when you finally tell people, this is what I went through. This is what I experienced. They're going to be looking like, no, nah, uh -uh. not the way you look, not the way you carry yourself, not the way. And that's the reason why. You know, it's so hard to overcome things like that because that's not what the devil wants. He wants chaos. He wants wars. He wants this. He wants that. Anything that is attached to uh, narrative, just anything that was the root to all evil, that's what he wants to continue. But when it comes to God, it comes to Jesus, whatever you feel that God represents to you, he will place some kind of terrible hardship into your life. And be able to show you what what you have the power to do. And then it'll be to the point where it's going to be put out there for the people. You know, the world to know. You know, um, just to be able to show people uh, what you, you're able to accomplish through, you know, <laughs> the, 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 impossible. What did you make pop, you know, possible for you um, to be able to conquer, for you to be able to overcome? Uh, for you to be able to win so you know I'm, I'm glad that universe has guided me to talk about things like this you know I didn't mean to get emotional but there are certain things that is like very touchy to talk about you know especially if you're not really trying to go all into the depths like hey what happened what happened you know but if people been with me for a while you know you know um but it's just that like I said this is not that that time to keep talking about that you know I said I had to lay it to rest I'm making peace with that and that's for me to not to talk about but if I can know I can talk about something that that was very tragic but it was on the content of me being able to speak of that but not you know like I said I don't um it's a beautiful thing that I was finally able to forgive my adopted father you know because I, when I talked about him I ripped that that type of title off of him I said he didn't earn that title but that man has put me through a lot to where yeah, he helped me find myself. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, um, and just anybody else that, that ties into that, you know, uh, I'm grateful for it too. Um, 
and it was a blessing even though it was tragedy it, it brought a lot of blessing out because it, it showed me where where my passion lies at to be able to help humanity being able to play my part and that's beautiful to me so I hope you are able to resonate with that. I, you know, I noticed how long this video has been out and I'm like, I'm getting tired. So, you know, I'm hoping that it can be able to, uh, you know, help somebody in their way of going through that. You know, um, it, it's hard to be able to go through things like this um, and be able to see a silver lining of it. But it's there. That's what usually where silver lining is. It, it like, is there, but it's taking, it, it's up to you to be able to find it. So I hope you are able to resonate with that content in that video. And so I'm going to cut that short. So much love to you. Peace.